Welcome students, welcome to this presentation on exchange rate determination under gold standard. In the previous uh, video, I had introduced you to the concept of uh, foreign exchange, foreign exchange market, participants in the foreign exchange market, uh, the activities that take place in the foreign exchange market, the currencies that are traded, the activities that take place and also the importance of time zone in foreign exchange markets. In this video, I shall explain to you the exchange rate determination under the gold standard. One of the distinguishing features of international trade is the complexity that is uh, related to the involvement of different currencies of the world. The question is, how do these currencies get exchanged for each other? At what rate do these currencies exchange for each other? And if they have found a uh, rate of exchange, do these rate of exchange remain fixed or do they change? What factors bring about changes in this rate of exchange? These two questions will uh, require a couple of videos to explain it is not as simple as it appears to be because there are many many activities many complex activities that take place in this foreign exchange market so in this particular video i will give you the origin of uh, the uh, foreign exchange uh, rate determination using the gold standard thereafter i would move into the other uh, determination theories that are related to the inconvertible paper currency standard. I hope you are finding these uh, videos useful and please do click the subscribe button and share it with your uh, friends. It might be useful to them as well. To understand the exchange rate determination, we first need to know the monetary system. Now, when we talk about monetary system, we have two monetary systems that have been involved in the world. The first one is called the classical gold standard. The other one is known as the classical paper currency system. In the history of money, metals have always held a prime place and of all the metals, gold has taken the pride of place. Gold became an important money metal and it continues to be one of the most fascinating metal that humankind has ever known. It is known for its luster, its malleability, its density and its relative scarcity which has made it a favorite metal for all. So gold exchange standard which is the gold classical standard does not operate anymore but it can give us insight into how actually the exchange rate is determined between two currencies. To understand the gold standard, a brief history of gold standard also is important. We can look at the gold standard this way. England followed the de facto gold standard uh, in seven, from 1717 and actually became operational only in 1821 when actual gold currency were in circulation. Thereafter, we find that in uh, the USA, which was uh, following the biometallic standard. Now, biometallic means two uh, currency metals were in uh, work. One was silver and one was gold. Uh, USA gives up its silver metal standard and operated only the gold standard de facto till 19, 1834. Then in 1870, we find Germany, France, uh, USA and many other countries of the world adopted the uh, gold standard. Now, under the gold standard, there are two systems. One is called the convertible gold standard and the other is called inconvertible gold standard. What right now I'm explaining to you the convertible gold standard. In the case of convertible gold standard, it is possible for converting the paper notes that were in circulation into actual gold at the government mint. Now, that means that if a person has got a currency notes with him or her could take it to the government mint and exchange it for gold. It is not buying gold. It is the government is obliged to uh, give gold in return if it is demanded. This meant that an equal amount of gold would be kept with the, uh, with the government in its mint. This exchange rate is based on a fixed quantity and of certain purity of the metal. So this was operated during the period 1817 to 1914 and this is called as the classical uh, gold standard, the golden era of the gold standard. 
gold exchange standard under the Bretton Woods system. Most countries of the world had given up the gold uh, standard because there was not enough gold to meet the exchange requirements of the country and uh, by now the uh, world trade had also expanded. So countries of the Bretton Woods uh, uh, under the Bretton Woods system from 1946 to 1971 followed what was called as the uh, gold uh, exchange uh, system. Now, uh, at this time, the IMF uh, modified the gold exchange standard and uh, uh, most countries had uh, fixed their currency in terms of the American dollar. Now, you may wonder why was it um, equated with the American dollar. The reason in one sentence was that the American economy benefited enormously after the world war because of its sale of arms and armaments and the inflow of gold. So what the IMF did at that time was IMF converted the US dollar into the reserve currency of the world. Now all the currency, all other currencies of the world express their value in terms of dollar and dollar in turn expressed its value in terms of gold. So countries could hold gold or dollar to make international payments because uh, both the uh, forms of payment was acceptable to any country of the world. Thus go, uh, dollar assumed the role of being a medium of exchange and as a measure of value in international payment. Of course USA and UK could not hold uh, reserves of other currencies except uh, in gold because they were already having reserves in terms of gold. Now this Bretton Woods system also did not uh, run for a long time uh, because countries started facing problems of uh, the scarcity of gold and UK and US especially started facing adverse balance of payment and there was a lot of outflow of gold and also the capital from the US economy. Dwindling gold reserves and adverse balance of payment both together saw that this gold standard of um, the gold exchange standard of the IMF also cannot continue. In us on August 15th, 1971, the Bretton Woods system ended. Gold's official role in international payments also came to an end. In this main theory of foreign exchange, every country must explain its currency in terms of gold. This again has to be uh, in terms of the quantity of gold and the quality or purity of gold. Purity of gold means gold can be uh, from eight, uh, from a 1 carat gold to 24 carat gold that shows the purity of gold. So here the currency has to be explained in terms of uh, the unit of gold and also in terms of the purity of gold. The USA, for example, fixed the value of one ounce of gold in terms of uh, gold at $20. So $20.67 uh, are required to buy one ounce of gold in the USA. Now, Britain also did this with their currency. Britain fixed it this way that for every one ounce of gold, one ounce is equal to 28.3495 grams of gold, it will need to pay 3.17 pounds. That's the value of pound in terms of gold. Thus, USA and um, uh, UK explain their currency in terms of gold. It would mean that the exchange rate of one pound is equal to 4.8 units of dollar. This is at the mint. At the government mint, this is the rate of exchange of dollar for uh, pound. In short, if we have to explain this, uh, it would mean that if country A's currency contains 10 grams of gold and country B's currency contains 5 grams of gold, then the rate of exchange between country A's currency and B's currency would be 1 of A would be equal to two currencies of a uh, country B because country B's currency has got less amount of gold than country A's currency. Let's look at the another uh, concept called mint parity equilibrium. 
The mint parity equilibrium did that I just explained of one pound being equal to 4.8 units of dollar. Will it always remain like this or will it fluctuate? And what will cause this fluctuation? This rate will not remain the same. This rate will fluctuate because of the changes in the demand and supply of the respective currencies. If a particular currency is more in demand, then that rate of exchange will also change. Now, under this uh, gold exchange standard, it is possible to import and export gold. This import and exporting of gold uh, is done to offset the payments that need to be made. But the import and export of gold does not take place um, uh, very easily. It has to uh, cover a certain cost of transporting gold from one country to the other. And this transporting gold from one country to the other involves the cost of packaging, the cost of insurance and the cost of movement of gold from one country to the other. So the exchange rate between the dollar and pound, for example, will have to take into consideration these factors or the cost of uh, transporting gold into the exchange value of the currency itself. This upper gold point is arrived at this, like this. One pound is equal to 4.866 at the mint. Now, if gold has to move out of US, then the value of gold will become one dollar, one pound is equal to 4.886 instead of 4.866. This point zero two is the cost of transporting gold out of US. On the other hand, if gold has to move into another country, we need to reduce the cost of transporting gold. Example here, the lower gold point is arrived at a condition where one pound is equal to a minus 0 0.02 is equal to 4.846, which in which case the cost of importing gold is foregone. Now, this upper and lower gold points are important in understanding gold standard because that is the point at which gold actually comes into the country or gold leaves the country. This is the point, this is a critical point at which these kind of um, uh, actions take place. Now, let's look at how gold uh, moves between countries under the gold standard and how it helps in the automatic adjustment in the uh, balance of payment positions of the country. The main thing that happens under the gold uh, uh, standard is that gold flow, inflow and outflow uh, between countries was fully permitted and countries would accept gold as a means of uh, settlement of their trade balances. Let's look at this flowchart. This flowchart is a very simple way of explaining how gold standard actually worked. Now let's start with a country having an adverse balance of payment. Assume that India had an adverse balance of payment with some country. Now if India had an adverse balance of payment, it would mean that uh, uh, it has to make payments to other countries and when it has to make payments to other countries, it will have to make payment in terms of gold. Now, when it is making payments in terms of gold, then the condition for the working of the uh, gold system, gold standard, is that how much gold has gone out, that much of currency has to be contracted or has to be withdrawn. Let's say that India had to export 10,000 units of gold to another country to make payment for the imports that it made. If it is uh, reducing its, uh, uh, it, it has sold out 10,000 units of gold, uh, sent out 10,000 units of gold to the other country, that means 10,000 unit worth of domestic currency has to be contracted. So outflow of gold means contraction of domestic currency. So once the domestic currency is contracted, then the immediate macroeconomic outcome should be that there will be a fall in the prices in the economy. So in India, the prices will fall. Once the prices fall, then the domestic uh, business will experience losses. There will be a, a fall in the levels of profits. Once there is a fall in the level of profits, this will lead to a fall in the level of uh, investment. 
once there is a fall in the level of investment this will result in a fall in the level of employment and um, uh, income of people will fall when income of people fall there will be a fall in the purchasing power of people and once purchasing power of people fall it means that they are going to buy less buy less of what they will buy less not only of the domestic goods they will also buy less of the imported goods thus the imports of uh, goods from foreign countries will reduce and with that the balance of payment situation is expected to automatically correct this is how the balance of payment was to be automatically corrected under the gold standard now there are more concepts in gold standard which is what i will explain here on the first thing is that there is a mint parity of exchange. What do we mean by mint parity of exchange? That means explaining the value of one currency in terms of another currency by the quantity of gold that is contained in both the uh, currencies or the purchasing power of both the currencies in terms of gold and also in terms of purity and weight. Now, what does that mean? So the rate of exchange has to be explained between two currencies in terms of gold. Example, the USA uh, fixed the price of one ounce of gold as uh, $20, uh, $20.67. This is just one example. So the $1, uh, one ounce of gold is valued at $20.67. Now, what the Britain did, the Brit Britain, uh, Britain fixed the value of uh, uh, one ounce of gold, that is uh, 28.34 grams of gold. Britain said that that value of gold, uh, that value of amount of gold can be purchased for 3.17 pounds. So, 3.17 of pound is equal to um, uh, is equal to 4.8 units of dollar. That is what. It so what Britain did was, Britain explained uh, its currency in terms of uh, gold as 3.17 pounds, pounds for 28.43 grams of gold. Now the exchange rate thus becomes that 1 pound is equal to 4.86 uh, uh, units of uh, dollar. In very simple terms if we have to understand, let's take two currencies A and B and uh, A can buy uh, you know, 10 grams of gold with one of its currency. In country B, it can buy that 10 grams of gold with two currencies. So the exchange rate would be that currency one, uh, uh, one uh, unit of currency A is equal to two cur uh, currency of country B. Now, um, there is something uh, more here about the mint parity or mint equilibrium. The exchange rate between two currency happens at the government mint and this is known to be a long run equilibrium. In the short period, the exchange rate will not remain the same because there are forces of demand and supply which will influence the value of this mint rate of exchange. Now, this to explain this value of mint, uh, mint rate of exchange, um, we have to understand the concept of import of gold and export of gold. Now, to export gold from the country, there is a cost involved. What is the cost involved? The cost of transport, the cost of packing and the cost of insurance. This has to be added to the mint rate of exchange. The actual rate of exchange between two currencies could vary above or below the mint power of exchange by the extent of the cost of transporting gold. Now, this variation in the uh, exchange rate is uh, defined is always within the well-defined uh, limits called gold points or specie point. Let's look at what are these uh, gold points or specie point. There are two points here. We have what is called as the gold upper point and the lower gold point. So the exchange rate between two currencies cannot go above the upper gold point and the exchange rate cannot fall below the lower gold point. How is the upper gold point obtained? The upper gold point is obtained assuming that one pound is equal to $4.886. In that case, it will. Uh, we have to add 0 0.02 to that uh, cost of transporting gold, which will make that one pound will be equal to $4.886. So that is how the upper point is obtained. The lower point is obtained when we reduce the cost of transporting gold. Now, what does that mean? One pound is equal to 
uh, 0.66 minus 0.2. That means 4.846 is the value which will be the lowest point at which the value of dollar can fall. So this upper limit and lower limit, it has got a very important place in understanding the movement of gold between two countries and preventing the currency value going very high or very low because when the currency value goes very high or very low, gold actually starts moving in and out of the country. So the upper gold point is a critical stage because at this stage gold will export, be exported and the upper, the gold, lower gold point is important because at this uh, rate the gold will actually start getting imported into the country. So and balance of payment, let's see how the uh, trade actually takes place between the two uh, countries. The USA has got a deficit with the balance of payment with, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, with Britain. Now, when there is an adverse balance of payment, what can happen? There will be an excess demand for pound because the demand for pounds exceeds the supply. Under this condition, um, the value of currency of pound will increase vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. Now, under gold standard, the currency value cannot increase beyond the upper gold point. So, how to reach this uh, upper gold point? At this point, the um, US importer, instead of demanding more of British pound, will look for exporting gold, actual gold to the uh, British um, exporter. So what this US ex uh, importer would do is, he would be willing to pay four pound, four dollars worth and get a pound from the treasury and then incur the cost of 0 0.04, even then that is cheaper than allowing the currency to rise beyond 4.04. So the British pound cannot go beyond 4.04 pounds. That is how the specie upper gold point puts a limit on the uh, value of the currency, which cannot go beyond 4.04. Looking at the low specie point, Let's reverse the situation and say the USA has got an adverse balance, a surplus balance of payment with Britain. If there's a surplus balance of payment with Britain, it means that there is an excess demand for a US dollar and the value of dollar would increase. Now, the US, um, the, U, um, the, Brit the British uh, importer would not like to pay uh, for a dollar higher than 1.44. So what the British uh, the importer would do is, instead of demanding more of uh, uh, dollars, he would rather um, export uh, gold into the country. And this uh, US importer is willing to buy any amount of gold. So he will be able to get gold at 3.96 uh, amount at that price he will be willing to take gold from the uh, US um, importer a gold standard work now why do we understand why do we need to understand the gold standard we need to know that at one point in history the gold uh, content of the two coins determined the exchange rate and that solved its uh, exchange rate problem for quite a long time but thereafter we find that um, this could not be continued and we have moved over to the paper currency standard. So thank you for watching this uh, video and uh, do share it with your friends and click the subscribe button. Um, thank you. Thank you very much.